I haven't filmed anything in a hot minute, so this video is probably going to be very rusty. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about all of the books that I plan on reading next year in 2022. But instead of dragging all of the books, and it's a lot of books that I plan on reading next year, instead of dragging all those books out onto the table and then filming the video and then ending the video and then bringing them all back to the shelf and reorganizing it, just gonna, I'm just going to keep them on the shelf and I'm just going to film in my room and just literally walk around my shelves and just tell y'all like what I plan on reading. And yeah, it's pretty simple actually. <laughs> so yep, I'm just going to film my shelves and just point out which books I plan on picking up in 2022. Now, of course, these are just the books that I own. There's of course a lot of books that are coming out next year that I also plan on reading, such as Stephen Graham's new book, Stephen Graham Jones' new book, Don't Fear the Reaper, which is his sequel to My Heart is a Chainsaw. Uh, if Taylor Jenkins Reid has a new book out, I'm definitely going to read that. Same with Zoe Stage. I know Lisa Jewell is coming out with a new book. I, I obviously want to read that. And then, of course, there's always the tentative, you know, Winds of Winter, uh, the fourth Gentleman Bastards book, um... You know, whenever those come out, they probably won't come out next year, but a man can dream, right? And then uh, the fourth, uh, what's it, Brandon Sanderson, Mistborn Era 2. The fourth Mistborn book in Era 2. I don't have that yet, obviously, but I do plan on picking that up when it comes out. And then if there's any new Stephen King books, I will obviously pick those up as well. I'm not sure. I think there's the third Gwendy book, but... I'm not too excited for it because I do, while I do love the first Gwendy's Button Box, the first novella, I've heard that the second book isn't as good, but I'm going to try to push through that because I know the third book, the cover of the third book has the Dark Tower on it. So that's intriguing. So I definitely want to try it out. But other than that, I don't know if he has any other books coming out, but obviously if he does, you know, I'm going to pre-order it. All right, with all of that being said, let's go ahead and jump right to it and just get to the shelves and I'll start pointing out what books I plan on picking up next year. All right, we are at my bookshelves. Hello, Cam. Hello, Conan. Looks like George is taking a little nap. There you go, George. Uh, <laughs> speaking of George, uh, I might, if I have time try to reread A Song of Ice and Fire, which is, of course, my favorite series of all time. If you couldn't tell, I have a million copies of all the books. Yeah, if I can get to it, great. But also, there's a lot of books, newer books, or new new to me books that I really want to get to, um, including, you know, some of his other works. Uh, the main one I want to get to that I haven't read yet is Windhaven, now, I've started this book before, and I stopped reading it not because I wasn't liking it. I was really enjoying it, but I was preoccupied with other books, so I had to put it down. But I want to jump back into it, and hopefully it's really good. And then there's also a couple, like, graphic novels, but I'm not a huge fan of graphic novels, so I probably won't get to those anytime soon. All right, before I start filming this part, I'm going to go get a chair for my lazy ass. <laughs> Perfect. So these two shelves are kind of miscellaneous uh, fantasy sci-fi, and a lot of these I, I am very excited to get to, including the Elven, which was kindly gifted to me by Josefina. Uh, she's read this before. This is by a German author, and she's read it in German, and she really liked it. And it's a chunky book, so hopefully I'll have time to get to it, but I definitely plan on getting to it. In Blackstone Heart, which was kindly gifted to me by Stacy. The premise of this sounds really good. It's about a guy who kind of has lost memory and he has to go find these different shards. I think that will help him remember his past or something. It sounded really cool by Mar Michael R. Fletcher. Very excited to get to that. Uh, the Dark of the Twelves, I'm going to read hopefully in December. Hopefully I have enough time. If not, it'll trinkle down into January. A uh, Sword of Kaigen. Very excited for this. I'm going to be reading this in February. 
and I've, I've, I don't think I've ever heard anyone not like this book. And it's supposed to be very emotional, very cathartic fantasy. So very excited for it. Uh, Voice of War, uh, I'm also very excited for, even though I don't really know too much about it by Zar Zach Argyle. All I know is that the the back of it just says, a soon-to-be father with a dark voice in his head, a sheltered girl addicted to threadlight, a young man whose life changes after he dies. Together they will change the world, whether they intend to or not. So going into it, not knowing a whole lot about it. And then uh, Wild Seed. Uh, I think I was supposed to read this this year, but... Uh, I don't know. My my interest for this has waned a bit, but I do plan on definitely picking up Exhalation. It's supposed to be very good modern sci-fi short stories. I definitely plan on reading that. If I have time, I'd love to reread The Themis Files, which is my all-time favorite trilogy of any genre. I love The Themis Files, so if I can get to it, great. And then also, by the same author, Sylvain Neville, I'm going to reread... A his Damn dogs. No more barking, please. Shut it up. Yeah, you. Alright, hopefully the the demons from hell are done barking. <laughs> but uh, as I was saying, before I was rudely interrupted, uh, History of What Comes Next by Sylvain Neville. This is the first book in his new trilogy, Take Him to the Stars. And the second book comes out in March. So I'm definitely going to reread this. A very short book. And I'm very excited for the sequel. I also really want to read Vengeful, which is the sequel to Vicious, which is one of my favorite books that I've read this year. I gave it five stars. I've heard the second book isn't quite as good, but I've also heard people say it's just as good. So I'm definitely curious to see how I lie on the spectrum. I, I anticipate it being very good. But maybe not quite as good as this. But definitely excited. And then a few people in my Discord chats have been really pushing me to read Red Rising. So Red Rising, I'm probably going to read in January. And then Golden Sun and Morning Star, which I don't have yet, I'll be reading in February. Uh, very excited to get to this. Even though I'm not, I'm not, I'm not actually quite sure what it's about. I know. I know very little, but I know a lot of people love the trilogy, so definitely excited to get to it at some point. And then A Desolation Called Peace. Uh, this is not a definite, but I do plan on getting to it. I did really love A Memory Called Empire, but I've heard the second book is more action-heavy and less on the philosophical side. But I do love crazy books, right? Like the Themis Files. Love the Themis Files. But the reason why I li liked this book is because it was so, you know, character driven and like the world building was really good and just like the culture clashing. I really enjoyed that. So I think the second book is supposed to be a little different. So not quite sure if I'll get to it, but I do plan on it. And then Cage of Souls by Adrian Tchaikovsky, same guy who wrote Children of Time. Really enjoy Children of Time. Uh, Cage of Souls. Let me show show off the beautiful cover here. This is definitely the most beautiful cover that I own. It used to be... Uh, where is it? Winds of Strife. Which is also a, just a gorgeous cover. But I mean... Cage of Souls. Holly! Holly! That's enough! What are you barking at? Huh? What are you doing? Go, go lay down. Go lay down. I don't even remember what I was saying. <sighs> These dogs are driving me up the wall, people. Ugh. Uh, I think I was talking about Cage of Souls. Yeah. Beautiful cover. And again, I'm not quite sure what it's about. All I know is Adrian Jakovsky. And I think it's like post-apocalyptic maybe where like there's a hundred thousand people on an island and they have to like figure out I, actually i don't know i don't know what it's about but i do know i'm very excited for it anyway project hell mary by andy weir 
Uh, I am super excited about this. Uh, I really enjoyed The Martian and the movie The Martian. And I've heard people say that it's better than The Martian, which is crazy because The Martian is a lot of people's favorite sci-fi book. So if that's true, I, I have a really good feeling I'm going to enjoy this one. All right, now we're down to the other shelf here. <clears throat> we have Sephiroth's Hand by Melissa McVale, which is the first book in A Pattern of Shadow and Light. Now, I've actually read half of this book before, but it was on Kindle, and I just wasn't a huge fan of that reading experience, so I just put it down. But the first half of this book was really good from what I remember. This was like maybe four or five years ago. So I am very excited to jump back into it now that I have the physical copy. I avoided buying the physical copy for a long time because it was really expensive. But I got it for a good price, so now I own it. And Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. Very excited for this. I've heard that the world building is very unique. It's not your stereotypical European fantasy, so very excited for that. And then The Emperor's Blades. I've literally had this book for years, and I've never picked it up. And I really don't know why, because the cover looks really cool, and it's just it's supposed to be a really good fantasy trilogy. But I've never picked it up, so I think Andrew's going to read it next year, so I might try to read it when he reads it. When, when are you reading it, Andrew? Tell me. Tell me. Uh, and then we have... Uh, Narsal's doing. We've got R. Scott Baker. Um, I think it's called the Prince of Nothing trilogy. And the first book being The Darkness That Comes Before. I'm definitely going to give it a shot. I've heard that it's very, um, very philosophically driven and it's very dense. It's very, very dense. But... I'm hoping that I like it. Oh, and also it's very dark. Like I've heard it's super dark, super dense, kind of like Malazan, but like like more dark and more tense or dense. Uh, but yeah, I am excited for it. And then eh, Age of Assassins, that's kind of a maybe. But The Wolf of Orin Yarrow. I'm really excited for this uh, because of the first line of the book. Just really sold me. They called me the bitch queen at the she-wolf because I murdered a man and exiled my king the night before they crowned me. Like, you can't... Like, that's one of the best opening lines I've ever heard. And I really hope that the rest of the book is just as good. And then... Uh, honestly, Trader's Blade and Jade City... Uh, I'm not too interested anymore. I will read them eventually, but I'm not going to guarantee that I get to them next year. The Great Bastards, though, I've heard very good things about from Leslie and Andrew. So I do plan on picking this up sometime next year. And luckily, it's a very... Sh oh, shit. <laughs> Ugh, sorry, Leslie. She gifted the, she gifted this to me. Uh, but yeah. It, luckily, it's very short. And I think it's a trilogy. And I love... You know, I love short fantasy books because a lot of the times you get chunky tomes like Sando. Sando. But yeah, great book. Uh, it's a great short book to try out. The Ninth Rain also, I was supposed to read this year, but I kind of pushed it back. Uh, I am excited to get to this. I don't quite know if I'll be able to because... You know, I'm I'm saying that I'm excited to read all these fantasy books, but realistically, I'm probably not going to get to all of them. Uh, Blood Song, I am buddy reading with a few people in January, so I know I'm going to get to this. And I, uh, I have a really good feeling I'm going to like this. It's supposed to be kind of like Name of the Wind, but better, and which appeals to me because Name of the Wind was pretty overrated in my mind. Like, I gave it three stars. It was fine, but a lot of people love it. Um, Blood, Blood Song, I'm hoping, is really good. Also, The Ocean at the End of the Lane. I'm excited for, even though I've tried reading a couple Neil Gaiman books in the past. Like, uh, what was it? American Gods 
and Good Omens. I did not enjoy those. I DNF'd them. But this is supposed to be very different. It's supposed to be kind of dark literary fantasy, which intrigues me. Also, it's very short, so I'm definitely going to be able to get to this next year. Can I slide it in there? That's what she said. <laughs> and then we've got a stack of mass market paperbacks, uh, older fantasy. And I actually do plan on reading Maliz all of the Malazan books next year. And I was supposed to read Gardens of the Moon in January, but I've already read it in December. And I really enjoyed it. This was a reread for me. Uh, excuse me. And I really enjoyed it. And then Dead House Gates, I was supposed to read in February, but now I'm going to be reading this in January. And I'm excited for it. Uh, the first time I read it, I was kind of underwhelmed and I was very confused by a lot of it. But hopefully knowing a little bit more about the series and I'm going to try to read it more slowly the second time through now. So I'm hoping to enjoy it a little bit more. And then we also have a couple Green Rider books, which uh, my good friend uh, Josephina is doing a read-along for the entire series. Now, I bought the first two books. I'm hoping to really like it, but we shall see. Uh, I think I predicted four stars for this book. Like, it won't be a perfect book, but I will very much enjoy it. I'm hoping to really like the series and continue with it, but I'm going to give the first couple of books a shot before I kind of dedicate myself to a seven-book unfinished series. And then we also have... A Cavern of Black Ice by J.B. Jones. I think I said I'm going to be reading this in April. I'm going to give it a shot. I've heard this book is also kind of dark and kind of dense, sort of like Malazan and uh, Baker. So I'm also very excited. I've heard that this is very atmospheric and that like it takes place in like a wintry environment and you really just feel the, the coldness in this book. Like you feel it in your bones. And yeah, I'm very excited to get to that. Also, the Dragon Bone Chair, if I have time. I'm particularly interested in this because I know George R.R. R. Martin pulled a lot from this book and this series and Tad Williams in general. So I'm interested to see like parallels between Game of Thrones and Dragon Bone Chair. And then we have the very lonely, dusty, bottom of the shelf. Uh, classics and nonfiction, which I really don't read that much, so I'm honestly not planning on reading really any of these classics. Maybe uh, Persuasion. I think I told Evie that I was going to read this around her birthday, and uh, and I would make that her birthday present to her, because this is her, I believe it's her favorite book of all time. It's at least her favorite Jane Austen book. So maybe I'll give that a shot. And it's short, so that's pretty good. And then nonfiction. Oh, yeah. I got this the other day. Trevor Noah. I have the audiobook, and then I found this used. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll pick it up. So maybe for a nonfiction, I'll pick that up next year. But honestly, this is just, like I said, lonely, dusty, bottom of the shelf. I almost never go to this these books all right now i gotta stand up for a little bit all right so i've got some Stephen graham jones i've read most of these already but there's a few here that i want to get to such as the bird is gone i want to get to that uh not for nothing i'm very excited for probably the one i'm most excited for is three miles past which is his novella collection and then also there's zombie sharks with metal teeth which has a cool cover. So I'm excited to get to those. And then, like I said, his sequel to My Heart is a Chainsaw, Don't Fear the Reaper, comes out, I think, in August or July sometime. So I'm definitely excited to get to that. And then this year, I reread the first kind of trilogy in the John Cleaver series, first three books. So next year, I want to get to my reread for the second trilogy. The Devil's Only Friend, Over Your Dead Body, and Nothing Left to Lose. They're not quite as good as the first trilogy, but they are very good. So hopefully I can get to that. And then I might make it a tradition 
for like Halloween to reread uh, Zoe's stage books because I just, I've read both of these books twice and I loved them just as much the second time, if not more. So I might make it a tradition to reread Zoe's stage books. Maybe not this one. It's less of a horror book. It's more of a thriller. Also very good though, four and a half stars, but maybe I won't go back and reread this one as often. And then as far as rereads go, I definitely, definitely plan on reading, rereading Daisy Jones and the Six. So that's a must for me because I loved this book. And right when I finished it, I was like, I want to read, read this book right now, <laughs> let alone next year. So yeah, definitely Daisy Jones and the Six. All right, back to sitting. <laughs> lazy ass <laughs> all right and then most of these books i have read uh bone chart emperor hopefully i can get to in december which is when i'm filming now uh if not i can always read it in january but i'm pretty confident i can get to it in december and then foundry side and shorefall i'm gonna be buddy reading with stacy and maybe a few other people i've already read robert jackson bennett's the Divine Cities Trilogy, which was very good, especially the first book. This was five stars, and these were both four stars. But Foundryside and Shorefall, I am very excited for. He might be one of my new favorite fantasy authors. I also plan on rereading Red Seas Under Red Skies and The Republic of Thieves, which are the second and third book in the Gentleman Bastard series. And I reread The Lies of Locke Lamora this year. And it was still really good. So hopefully I will enjoy my experience with these books. And then we have the Song of Shattered Sand series. And last year, or this year, <laughs> 2021, I reread these books, gave them five stars. And then I read these books for the first time, gave them four and a half stars. The novella was pretty good. I gave it four stars. And now next year I plan on reading... The fifth book, When Jackals Storm the Walls, and then the sixth book, which I don't currently own, A Desert Torn Asunder, and that will finish off the series, and honestly, this is one of my favorite fantasy series of all time. Definitely top ten, maybe top five? I don't know, but definitely top ten. Uh, and then this shelf, um, oh yeah, I'm gonna definitely plan on rereading Mistborn Era 2 with The Alloy of Law, Shadows of Self, and The Bands of Mooring, Mourning, and anticipation for the fourth book, The Lost Metal, which I think comes out in November around my birthday. All right, and these are kind of my mystery thriller books. I've already read most of these books, but I do plan on getting to some of these that I haven't quite read yet. And then uh, A Slow Fire Burning, which I started... When did I start this book? Was it last month or... Oh man, I'm, I'm so tired, y'all. <laughs> but yeah, I did start this book and I didn't finish it, so... Hopefully I can get to it next year. Sometime next year, which is my caveat for all of these books. Sometime next year. Uh, and then I really enjoyed Razorblade Tears, so I went ahead and picked up the other book by this author, Blacktop Wasteland. If I can get to that, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, and then Jane Harper, The Dry, uh, not a priority, but possibly I could read, uh, Pieces of Me, uh, which was kindly gifted to me by Patrick on many a discords. Uh, this was written by his sister, uh, Kerrigan Richards, so I'm very excited to read this, and then I pre-ordered her other book, can't remember when it comes out, but... Excited to give those a shot. And then uh, the Flanders panel, which I'm not, I, I can't quite remember what this book is about, but I know that Sharon Dwyer and Patrick both really likes it. So I'll give that a shot. And then Confessions will be a part of my TBR swap with Stacy in February. And I just read her other famous book, Penance. And that was okay. Uh, but from what I hear, that this one is way better. Uh, that comes from Sharon and Stacy. So I definitely plan on reading that. And then everything else is either stuff that I've read or stuff that I don't plan on reading. 
And then down here are like my collection of Agatha Christie books. Uh, I think these these ones facing out are all my Hercule Poirot books. I really enjoy Hercule Poirot, so I might pick up a few of them. But honestly, I haven't really been in the mood for Agatha Christie lately. Like, at the beginning of the year, I planned on reading one a month. One Agatha Christie book a month. But that did not happen. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I really need to read all of them because I literally went out and collected all of her books in mass market paperback like really old copies but i just haven't been in the mood lately so maybe that'll change next year i don't know and then on this shelf uh there's some cormac mccarthy which i picked up i think i'm gonna give him a shot uh jazz you like jazz <laughs> by tony morrison hopefully i can give that a shot and then this was a book of the month club pick for me a History of Wild Places. Wild Places. Uh, yeah, I plan on reading this. Uh, I think I was going to try to read it this month, but I'm not quite sure I'm in the mood for a more literary piece, so just save that for next year whenever I'm in the mood. And then up here, I could always read more Ray Bradbury. He's one of my favorite authors of all time. I haven't read a whole lot from him this year, uh, I have read most of these, but there are quite a few that I haven't gotten to yet. I would like to try this one out, which is a collection of some of his crime stories. I've read a lot of these, but I think a lot of them I haven't read, so maybe I'll give that a shot. But yeah, Ray Bradbury is always on the table. And then Haruki Murakami, I own all of his fiction books, but I, have, I haven't read most of them. So I definitely plan on, plan on picking up a couple of these, including a lot of his really more, more famous ones, like Kafka on the Shore, um, Norwegian Wood, Wind Up Bird Chronicle. Like, I really need to get to those books. And then we have Lisa Jewell over here in the dark corner. Uh, these are more of her, like, romance books, which are more, like, con contemporary books. I probably won't get to those. But then we have a few, like, Before I Met You, The Third Wife, The House We Grew Up In. I definitely want to get to these, including Lisa Jewell's new book, which I can't remember what it's called, but it comes out sometime next year. Uh, but I've already read all of her newer books, so probably just these three that I'm going to prioritize and her new book. And then we have Michael Crichton. I've read most of these books. Uh, he's not a huge priority at the moment. There are a few of these that I haven't gotten to. I think it's mainly this the, this side. So Timeline, The Lost World, and then a couple nonfiction. I believe I've read everything else. Except for those um, John Lane books. Which, are, you know, they're fine. But, yeah. Everything from Airframe on down, I basically read, so really just timeline and the lost world i know joanna loves timeline but we'll see if i actually get to it or not i'm not quite sure i just realized this is basically also turning into a bookshelf tour so welcome to my bookshelf tour <laughs> uh this is kind of like my uh young adult slash middle grade slash kids book section uh fireborn you know if i can get to it it's fine but again i'm not super interested in it uh winter's promise which is going to be a part of my tbr swap with stacy this is kind of the, the wild card pick that she picked for me like uh, i don't know if you'll like it but it's one of my favorites so give it a shot <laughs> uh i'm excited for it though and then the golden compass which i've never read uh that that would be cool to get to and of course my annual reread for Drums, Girls, and Dangerous Pie. I'll, of course, be reading that next year as well. I read it last month around my birth or on my birthday, and it was very good. One of my all-time favorite books. And then, if I can, if I have enough time, I'd love to be able to get to the Redwall series, which I devoured these books as a kid in elementary school, and I don't remember a lot about them. But I've heard that the books are really good upon a reread, even as an adult. So I am excited to give them a shot. I always remembered Lord Brocktree being my favorite, 
I mean, look at that badass cover. It's like a badger with a sword. It's just like, you want, you don't want to fuck with this guy. <laughs> and then there's also this chunky uh, book, which it's Led Zeppelin, and it goes over all of their songs and the story behind every track. I plan on trying to get to just like one song a day, just reading through it. And just, I love this book. I haven't even read it, but I already know I'm going to love it. So that's that. And then down here in the corner, you got Harry Potter, which no. <laughs> uh, and then there's Kurt Vonnegut. Maybe I could dabble into that, but probably not a huge priority. And we'll save King for last. And we'll come down here at my various uh, horror books. Uh, let me see. We have The Patience of a Dead Man, which I'm excited for. I know a lot of people love this trilogy and this book specifically. And then, uh, what are we excited for? Uh, Drew Hayes, Undeath in Taxes, which is the second, uh, Fred the Accountant, Fred the Vampire Accountant book. I really enjoyed the first book, and I plan on continuing in that series. Home Before Dark. Another TBR swap with Stacy. Uh, very excited for this one. It's got one of my favorite uh, tropes, a uh, book within a book. And then we got some more Robert Jackson Bennett books. Not fantasy. I think these are horror thriller books. And also Mr. Shivers right there. Also Robert Jackson Bennett. And then Kill Creek, which I've wanted to read for years. Uh, I plan on getting to that. Uh, I'm already a little bit into What One Wouldn't Do, which is a horror anthology by, I, th I believe, independently published authors. So, And I am enjoying most of it, so I do plan on finishing that. And then... Uh, then those are maybes. <laughs> and then, of course, we have King. And I do plan on reading, rereading the Dark Tower series, which one of my all-time favorite series but i've only finished the entirety of the series once i've reread i believe the first two or three books twice but i haven't read these later books i've only read them once so breathe jake <laughs> breathe um but yeah I, def I definitely plan on getting to these probably one a month like january february you know doing all that and then of course i am I'm a little behind on my novella ranking, so I need to read uh, his novella collections, you know, different seasons, if it bleeds. I've read Full Dark No Stars and then a spattering of other novellas. And then also, you know, I should probably plug my book club, right? Uh, the Stephen King Short Story Book Club. We're currently reading Night Shift, and that's going very well. People are enjoying it. And then starting in March, I believe we're going to be doing Skeleton Crew, which has the same amount of, about the same amount of stories. So it should take a few months, probably like three months or so to finish. And then after that, we would move on to Nightmares and Dreamscapes. Everything's eventual. Just after sunset. Bizarre Bad Dreams. Uh, hopefully people will stick around. Uh, we probably won't be able to finish all of the short stories this year. <laughs> it would probably bleed into next year. So hopefully for y'all who are enjoying it right now, hopefully y'all stick with me. And then for anyone who's interested, you can come ch check out the <laughs> you can come check out the Booker Strummer Discord and come join the book club because we're having a lot of fun talking about Stephen King short stories. And then more King in general, I do plan on doing kind of an unofficial read through of the Bachman books. Me and Josephina kind of talked about that, doing that. So we're going to start with The Long Walk in January. Uh, I, for me, I'm skipping uh, Rage because I'm not a big fan of that book. But for anyone who wants to read it, they can go ahead and do that. But I'm basically going to start with The Long Walk. And then Roadwork, The Running Man, uh, Thinner, where is it? The Regulators, and Blaze. So I'm going to read all of those books next year. And then, you know, 
since King is one of my favorite authors, he's my second favorite author, there's always a good chance that I, you know, re oh, that's bright shit, <laughs> that I reread, you know, any of his other books. Uh, but yeah, but I think The Dark Tower, Richard Bachman, short stories in the Velas, that's already enough rereading, so that, that'll probably be it. Um, but yeah. All right, so those are all of the books that I currently own that I plan on getting to next year for my 2022 TBR. Now, none of this is official, of course, because you know that's a lot of planning. <laughs> uh, so I probably won't get to every single book that I mention here, but I'm going to try. And there's some definitely, or there's definitely some definites. Like, obviously, I really want to read The Dark Tower, and then those new releases that I was talking about, I really want to get to, and then there's a lot of rereads that I want to get to, and just a lot of uh, fantasy and horror books that, if I can get to, that would be great. But yeah, these are all of the books that I plan on getting to sometime next year. Please let me know what you guys thought of this video down in the comments. Please let me know if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them. Whether you liked them, whether you hated them, whether you thought they were meh, or if you're excited to pick them up like me, or if any of these books you've read before and you want to reread, uh, please let me know down in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and the Bookish Drummer Discord. Thank you so much for watching and have a terrific day.